Hard work paid off for Matt Fraser, but will it pay off for anyone else? Finland's fittest man is back at 100%, and we're talking rules with Boz. That's coming up next on Game Central. Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Game Central presented by Thorne Personalized Scientific Wellness. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez. We are continuing to work our way through the off season. We still have some good competitions here on the horizon, but we also have some that have already taken place. What stood out the most to you so far? Well, it's hard to believe that we're only yeah. a month away from the Rogue Invitational, which had the largest and most progressive prize purse we've seen outside of the games. And now you look at the next six weeks, Sean, what we have on tap, three licensed competitions, three really great locations, San Diego for the Legends Masters, mm -hmm. Dubai for the Dubai CrossFit Championships, Miami for Wadapalooza, of course. And all of these combined provide great earning opportunities for the top athletes and really cool, unique competition experience for all divisions, exactly what you want for the off season. The regular season, the game season, starts in February, and that means that athletes are starting to think about how they are going to prepare. And there is another program out there right now uh, for competitive athletes. Matt Fraser with the Hard Work Pays Off program. We know what he was able to accomplish and how smart he was with his training and the way he attacked events. But will he be able to now help other athletes duplicate those results? Absolutely, in short. I don't think you win the CrossFit Games five times in a row and not be able to build a legit system and structure in place around competing and developing the physical and mental tools to be a professional at the highest level of this sport. And now that he's retired, it's very clear that he's not letting that passion and that, uh, that knowledge go to waste. He's just refocusing it now, putting it into this program. And if I'm an athlete looking to break through or even a top athlete, I would give a serious look at this program in particular, talking with athletes like Pat Vellner, who said since Matt's retired, they've been able to glean some information from him. And Pat's a, you know, a top athlete in this sport already. Plus you look at the work that he's done with Justin Medeiros, Jason Hopper. I think there is a lot of value here from the champ. And you mentioned Jason Hopper, a guy who exploded onto the scene last year with what he did at the MAC, could not duplicate those results uh, at the CrossFit Games. What can we expect to see from him in 2022 as he now works with Fraser? Well, if he's not a podium threat in 2022, I think he will be soon. And I think we have to temper expectations. They're a little unfair based on this last season. Because we have to remember the games were only his second live CrossFit competition in his career. Mm -hmm. He's also only 23 years old. Um, and I bumped into him at the airport after the games this year, had a nice chat with him. And he talked about how he really underestimated the environment and atmosphere of the games and the effect that it would have in those big, unique, games exclusive type events where you have odd objects, you're outside, you have a big competition field with a large heat. And I think he got swallowed up in events like number two with the pig flip or event five with the Husafelt bag. And we already saw an improvement from the games to Rogue in that very first event at Rogue when he finished top five in that event that felt like a games event with the hill built in, a lot of odd object outside type stuff. And then he looked comfortable in the events that he should do well at and he was able to notch an event win in event three at Rogue. So I do think that we're gonna start to see an improvement there and he's only gonna get better with more experience. Let's go now across the Atlantic to Europe, where Yonikoski is getting back to 100%. He recently took to Instagram to say that he is now three months post-op on his shoulder surgery that he had for that torn supraspinatus. He is starting to work his way back. And when you look at what he has been able to do so far in his career, he made it to the CrossFit Games for the first time in 2014. Since that time, he has had four top 10 finishes at the games. And his best finish was this year when he took sixth with that, you know, not 100% shoulder. What can we expect to see from him now as he gets back to 100% and looks to work his way back into contention for another top 10 finish at the games? Well, first and foremost, we can expect to see him back at mm -hmm. full strength because I consulted with a close person in my life who happens to be a physical therapist. <laughs> and she said he's right on track to get back to full strength by the time the season gets going and it should be able to compete uh, in its entirety. But you look at 27 years old, he's been at the uh, top of the sport for nine seasons already, seven appearances at the game, but 2016 withdrawals due to a back injury. 
2018 takes the season off due to a knee injury. Now in this off season is recovering from a shoulder injury. So he is a little bit injury prone overall, but at full strength, he will always be a top 10 contender because like our good friend Liam Neeson said, he's got a particular set of skills, particularly swimming, elite level gymnastics, and a top level engine that lends itself to excelling at the games at the highest level. Now remember, this is a career best finish with that shoulder injury that happened before the games. So I can certainly envision a time maybe in the near future where he catches a tailwind, cracks the top five, maybe even sniffs the podium. And here's the stat to remember, mm -hmm. another athlete that showed up at the games at 19, who had a lot of years under his belt at this time was Ben Smith. In his eighth season at the games, which Yona will be going into this season, hopefully, he finished second. So mm -hmm. a lot of gas left in the tank. Yeah, good to see Yona back at 100%. And as we get closer to the game season, we are getting closer to the release of the rule book for 2022. That is going to be out soon. And I was able to speak with director of competition, Adrian Bosman, about the 2022 rule book. Boz, thanks so much for doing this. Yeah. Now moving into uh, the things like the equipment list, uh, floor layouts, anything like that. Like I said, the rule book never gets smaller when it comes to that <laughs> stuff. What kind of things have you uh, added this year to maybe add some more clarification and less wiggle room yeah. for people? Nothing's really changed dramatically on that uh, end. You know, we're still gonna do our best to put forward floor plans for each stage of competition so that we can see a uniform performance from the athletes. We're gonna give generic uh, equipment recommendations before each stage of competition. So you have enough information to know what's expected for you to compete, but not so much that you can figure out what the workouts are specifically. So that way people can prepare and, and get ready to go. Additionally, in the rule book, small uh, thing there is we added the language that we wanna make it really clear. When you're competing, it's your workout. You shouldn't be getting outside help to position equipment or to help you along the field of play, anything like that. Once three, two, one, go happens, it's your responsibility to manage that kind of stuff. So we put some lang language in there to clarify that and make sure that there's no question as to who's doing what once the workout starts. Anything else you wanna add about the upcoming rule book that we haven't already addressed? Yeah, there's some interesting details uh, if we look at the season as a whole for athletes that are gonna be in the age group divisions. So a few things there. Number one, the very young and the very old divisions. So the 14 and 15 year old division and then anybody in the 55 and above divisions. Those athletes, it's a bit of a strange situation in the open if they wanna be part of a team. They can absolutely be a part of the team but because the workouts that those divisions do are slightly different than the RX uh, individual division, they cannot contribute to the team score. It's just an unfortunate reality for this season. However, you can get on the team roster, you can still make sure that you're a part of that group because if your team qualifies forward to the quarterfinals and the semifinals and, and maybe even to the games, if you're on that roster initially, you're still within the pool of eligible athletes that can compete at those stages. So it's a little bit, you know, unfortunate that you can't contribute directly to that open score, but you can still be a part of that team. And if the team chooses you to represent them moving forward, you're welcome to do so. So that's, that's one big key there for the uh, age groupers. Another kind of interesting thing, if we look at that broad view of the season, is that if you have a really competitive age group athlete, they may end up qualifying in multiple divisions. So for example, if you have somebody in the 40 to 44 year old division and they're really, really hot stuff, they might be eligible to compete in the individual quarterfinals, the team quarterfinals, and the age group quarterfinals. And they're welcome to do so. They're, those competitions are two weeks apart from each other. So athletes that want to compete in all of those that qualify, they are more than welcome to do so. If that athlete is still in the running for multiple divisions after the quarterfinals, I mean, number one, congrats, that's, that's a pretty awesome feat to be that well-rounded. Uh, number two, this is where the decision is gonna have to be made. Once we get to the semifinal stage of competition, athletes that qualify in multiple divisions have to make a choice as to what division they wanna compete in at the semifinals. So you've only got one ticket to semifinals, can only punch that on one of those divisions if you qualify for multiple. So you're gonna to have to make a hard choice there. So that's, that's kind of where the split lies. So in your mind, the easiest way to simplify, quarterfinals, if I qualify across the board, I can compete across the board. Semifinals, if I qualify in more than one division, I've gotta pick one. All right, well, 
I hope everyone is listening to this. I hope everyone will read their rule books and understand everything that they need to do in order to avoid, avoid any sort of confusion or you know penalties or anything like that. Be safe, everybody. Read your rule books. Know what you're doing going into the open and beyond. Boz, thanks so much for doing this, man. We really appreciate it. My pleasure, man. Big thanks to Adrian Bosman for taking the time to sit down and do that. We have a lot coming your way. Of course, the Open starts February 24th of 2022. It's right around the corner, so start training for that. The 2018 CrossFit Games documentary is out on December 7th. And then another off-season competition, this time for the Masters. That will start on December 9th. That is the Legends Championship. There will be a live stream for that, so make sure you check out the Legends Championship Instagram page for all the information on that. Tommy will have it inside the leaderboard to get you ready for that competition and then we have an upcoming Game Central with Annie Sakamoto to go over some of the top stories on the women's side going on this offseason. That is going to do it for this edition of Game Central presented by Thorne Personalized Scientific Wellness. For Tommy Marquez, I'm Sean Woodland. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you next time.